Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us continue our discussion on rotating frame of reference. See we have looked at the rotating frame of reference can have both angular velocity and angular acceleration and for simplicity we simply use the unit vectors i and j. With the explicit understanding we are using it for the rotating frame of reference it makes our mathematical representation much simpler. They are not to be treated as uh, Cartesian i and j. We have also looked at that the rotating frame of reference can have a rotation like this and uh, we view the point A from a rotating frame of reference. I have not specified any specific requirement here and we have the position vector r and we also have the position vector r a and viewing from the rotating frame of reference it is possible for me to get velocity of a equal to velocity of b plus omega cross r plus v del. I said v del has a special meaning in this context. You should visualize this as the velocity perceived by an observer sitting on the rotating frame of reference observes what happens to point A. And I can also go back to the basic relative velocity expression V A equal to V B plus V A B. So, V A B has two terms like what is shown there and we have also looked at uh, how to differentiate when I have a fixed frame of reference and rotating frame of reference. We have got the expression for the acceleration. Here again you have uh, A rel which is to be viewed as what is the acceleration that could be measured by an observer sitting and moving rotating with the rotating frame of reference that is very important ok. And you can also have this as a a equal to a b plus a acceleration of a a with respect to b and the important point to note is express all the vectors in common coordinate system before summing them. This is a very important caution. And while doing that you also try to find out the simplest way to take the vectorial representation. In some instances it may be simpler to express it in terms of small i and small j. In some instances it may be simpler to express it in terms of capital I and capital J. So, if you look at the problem and find out what way you will mathematically solve have all this at the back of your mind so that you do not unnecessarily do excessive computations ok. Let us take up a very interesting problem, it is simple enough at the same time one can learn many many aspects of the rotating frame of reference by looking at this. So, if I allow the crank to rotate it can uh, have a complete sweep like this and you have a crank OA, you have a slotted member CB and uh, the crank OA revolves counterclockwise with a constant angular velocity of 15 radians per second. For the position theta equal to 30 degrees determine the angular velocity of the slotted link C B and the acceleration of A 
as measured relative to the slot in CB using a suitable rotating frame of reference. So, I have to find out uh, the relative acceleration which is asked as part of the problem. And you also have a very interesting uh, aspect, I have uh, this at angle theta whereas, this link is at angle 2 theta. So, the problem statement says note the dependency of the angular motions of the crank OA and slotted link BC. So, with the animation you have a fairly reasonable appreciation of what is the way the members are connected, how the point A moves and one of the important steps in uh, rotating frame of reference is to identify where will you have your fixed frame of reference and where will you have the rotating frame of reference. Here I have two members are rotating, I have a crank OA rotating and also the slotted member CB is oscillating. And uh, can we have a rotating frame of reference attached to crank OA and then solve the problem. Because I have crank A, OA is rotating, why not I sit at crank OA and then see what is happening. I do not get any benefit out of this. It is not that when you have a rotating frame of reference, take a rotating frame of reference attached to any member that is rotating, do not do that. Fine. On the other hand, suppose I have a rotating frame which is attached to the slotted member, I have some sort of a physical appreciation of the problem better. If I move with this, what I would see is, I would see the point A is simply having a linear motion within the slot. And I am going to repeat this animation several times later also, so that you get a comprehensive appreciation of how we take the rotating frame of reference. And the same problem can also be solved from uh, your simple polar coordinates. We will also see how we can solve it from simple polar coordinates, fine. So, in this case what I have is, I have the rotating frame origin is kept at this point and this is rotating with the slotted arm uh, CB. You know when this problem was given to students uh, in an exam, some of them have also used another way of fixing the rotating frame of reference which I was unable to animate it completely. They have fixed the point B in our expression to the point what you have here, which is not a very good choice. So, you imagine that I have uh, the y axis is like this moving with this, because before you solve a problem, you should find out which is the best rotating frame of reference. If you know that, then the problem is straightforward, there is nothing more to it. So, you need to at least solve one or two problems where you exhaust all possibilities and then burn your fingers and find out which one you should not do. That is also learning. It is not that you are taught what to do always correctly. What not to do is also learning, okay. You know, when I have a problem like this, there is no restriction that I should find out uh, the relative velocity only by a rotating frame of reference. You could also bring in your uh, velocity polygon approach and find out the focus is that you try to understand what kind of motions happen in the problem that you are solving. The focus is on visualization first, not application of mathematics. Visualization is very, very important. 
that is why we take a very simple problems and in this also we have followed a very nice symbolism a slotted member is simply shown as a line with a some slot it is not exactly reproduced to the actual slot length or the slot width or anything like that it is a very nice way of representation and we are asked to find out for a particular angle theta equal to 30 degrees. So, we have the relative position smart and here you are able to see that you are really looking at the analysis when the point is coming down that is very clear from the animation that is the angle which we, we have to analyze. And what are the quantities that you know you are given the angular velocity of uh, link OA. So, do you get the velocity of point A completely? Again you go back to your circular motion you understand you know everything about point A that is why you are not asked to find out what is the absolute acceleration of point A you are asked to find out what is the relative acceleration in the slot you look at the problem statement. In this class of problems you have to find out by solving the problem what is the value of the relative acceleration that is in the sense it is not the relative acceleration from the relative equation what I mean is the ARL, ARL is nothing but what is the acceleration a person sitting on the rotating frame would perceive. So, you are given uh, OC equal to OA equal to 150 millimeters and omega of OA is given as 15 radians per second and uh, whenever I have a slotted member it is always better to visualize a coincident point. We have always been labeling the coincident point as P. So, the point P is coincident with point A and from the given problem statement the velocity of A is completely known. I know the magnitude and the direction is perpendicular to OA. So, you have that information and what is the magnitude? The magnitude is uh, r omega we are given r as 150 millimeters and omega is 15 radians per second. So, I get the velocity magnitude is 2250 millimeters per second and I have V A is completely known. And what are all the other things that you know? What is V P? That direction is also known it is perpendicular to C B perpendicular to C B and what is the velocity of A with respect to P that is perpendicular to V P. So, it is actually along the slot fine. So, you have to visualize this you know you have to cultivate the habit of visualizing the problem do not memorize the solution procedure for a problem because it differs from problem to problem you must physically argue what is it happening how I am in a position to take it fine. And I have V p is given as uh, 1125 root of 3 millimeters per second and uh, velocity of A with respect to P simply turns out to be 1125 millimeters per second this is straightforward. Okay, I am also going to solve this from rotating frame of reference. The idea is when you are discussing rotating frame of reference do not close your eyes that you will not find out velocity by any other method because such mental blocks students get developed. I can also use instantaneous center of rotation and find out the velocity. I can also use velocity polygon. I can also use rotating frame of reference to find out the quantities. You must be adept in switching back and forth in any of these methods ok. And uh, you know we also need to find out what is the angular velocity of the slotted member and uh, let us attach a rotating frame of reference to the slotted member C B like this 
So, whatever the quantity that I have got and it is very clear the point is coming down it is very clear. So, if I have uh, x is positive this way when it is coming down it is minus 1125 i and from geometry we have already said that point p and a are coincident. So, I can find out uh, p c as uh, 150 root 3 millimeter or c p as 150 root 3 millimeters and we have already got what is v p. We know the length p c. So, it is a child's play to get what is the angular velocity of this. Even before doing it like this you already had a clue in the problem statement you had theta and 2 theta. So, there was a problem statement was very clear if you observe all this it has to be only like this. So, I get the angular velocity of the slotted member as 7.5 and VREL is minus 1125i. Now, let us go and solve this from a rotating frame of reference. We have uh, taken the rotating frame of reference like this. Then I write the expression before that I have the vectorial expression for C A as 150 root 3 i millimeters. And you can write this expression comfortably. See, I consciously mix the symbols. The idea is you must get out of the symbols and physically look at the problem statement. I am looking at point A. So, the velocity of A is my interest, absolute velocity of A. That is equal to absolute velocity of C plus what is the omega of the rotating frame of reference here it is omega c b and the position vector r c a plus v x y which is the velocity a person would observe when it is rotating with the rotating frame of reference. And what you should understand is in this expression you already know what is it to be written for v c. I have taken C as a fixed point. What is the velocity of that point? 0 also you can have. So, that goes off and I can know from the physics of the problem V A completely. I know its direction as well as magnitude. I can express it in terms of the coordinate system that I choose which is easier for me to solve. Here it will be easier to handle it in small i and small j. So, essentially what you do not have in this expression is I do not know what is the value of omega c b, I do not know what is the value of v l. So, I essentially generate two equations out of this by collating the i and j terms. I have two unknowns, I can solve for two of them. We know what is V A, this is completely known and I can also express V A because I know the geometry of the system and the relative orientation of the rotating frame with respect to that. So, V A is nothing but 2250 multiplied by minus sin 30 i plus cos 30 j please verify some of these uh, there could be some small typographical errors. So, I have uh, yeah this is a very very important point I have I thought that I should discuss and then write what will you write as VREL. See a thumb rule is if I have a slotted member attach your rotating frame to the slotted member. And if a person is sitting on the slotted member and then rotate with it, he would perceive the particle to move along the slot. That is why we choose a rotating frame of reference. I have just made a statement after solving all of this, I will go back to the animations again because I want you to help you to visualize. The visualization is very, very important. Then you will be very confident in handling 
rotating frame of reference. If you solve one or two simple problems, any other problem you can tackle. Okay. So, one of the important learning here is the moment I have a slotted member, because in this case the slotted member is along one of the coordinate axis, it is just a straight line, I can comfortably write what is the component of velocity a person sitting on the rotating frame would perceive, which is labeled as VL. It is not the complete relative velocity. We have seen VA with respect to B has two components, omega cross R plus VL. So, keep that in mind. And I have omega cross CB, omega, uh, omega CB cross RCA equal to omega CB into 150 root of 3 j, because I have uh, k cross i, I get this as j. So, from this equating the i terms, I get V del as minus 1125 i and then I get uh, omega C B as 7.5 k radians per second, same as what we have got it by using the velocity polygon. There again, we had to do it in two stages, here again I should do it in two stages. Only thing is here the computation is vectorial, there there was physical appreciation of how do you handle the problem, that is the greatest advantage. Whichever way I calculate velocity, we have always seen it is always better to use a vectorial approach to calculate the accelerations, okay. So, we will get on to calculating the acceleration. So, as before you have the x y axis attached to C B and I have this distance is 150 root 3 millimeter and you should be comfortable to write this expression completely for the context of the problem. Okay, I have uh, deliberately changed this, we had this as the A B, fine. And in this problem, we are actually having the origin of the rotating frame of reference located at C. You should get out of this A and B, okay. You should interpret it in terms of what is the coordinate velocity, coordinate acceleration and so on. And what is the uh, symbol omega that you will attach to? It is all related to omega C B. And in this problem, you have a luxury that this is rotating at the constant angular velocity. So, I will have omega dot will go to 0. And we have already determined V del. I would like you to ponder about what is it that you know on A del. Think about it. I want you to think about it now. As we discuss, I will ask a question. Let me see whether you answer. Fine. We have already discussed about VREL and you have the angular velocity rotating frame is uh, omega equal to omega C B that is 7.5 k radians per second. And we also have the luxury that uh, alpha O A equal to 0 which also implies alpha C B is 0 because they are connected beautifully. So, whatever happens to the link OA is reflected upon link CB because the way they are constructed. So, when I do not have an angular acceleration for the link OA, I also do not have an angular acceleration for the link CB that you learned from the problem statement. And uh, you are conscious that the point C is fixed. So, I have A C is 0 and then uh, I have already discussed we are having a constant angular velocity. So, omega dot C B is 0. So, omega dot cross R is 0 and you have the position vector C P I is 150 root 3 I millimeter. We have seen this computation several times earlier. And we have this omega cross omega cross r. So, that turns out to be 
minus 14614.2 i millimeter per second square. See what you should recognize here is I have a very long expression for acceleration. Fine, we are fitting in each and every component. Some of the components when we discuss a person sitting on the rotating frame of reference fails to observe but mathematics gives you that. Fine. And uh, what is the direction of this acceleration? This is actually along the coordinate axis. In this case, it is also along the slot. But this is given by the component omega cross omega cross r. Okay. Now, we will also look at the, the term involving Coriolis acceleration. I have 2 omega cross V del and I have this as uh, k cross i. So, I get this as j. I get the value as minus 16875 j millimeter per second square. Usually, this is the component people have failed to observe sitting on the rotating frame of reference. And you need to understand how this component is reflected in the mechanism, what is its direction. Okay. So, I have this, uh, the point A is like this and if I interpret this and put the Coriolis acceleration, this is perpendicular to the slot and this is in the negative direction of j. So, this is the direction of Coriolis acceleration, which is very clear from the mathematics, no difficulty at all. If you hang on to mathematics, absolutely no difficulty in getting the Coriolis acceleration. See, one of the important learning that you have to understand is what is the direction of it in relation to the slot, how it is located. These are all become important when you analyze physical problems. Fine. We will also see one interesting application. If you do not understand this, your design of space stations would really be geoparticized. We will see that where this is very nice. You have to recognize that this is perpendicular to this. Okay, that concept is very important. Now, can you tell me what is the that you know on, on ARL? The problem itself says that you have to determine the relative acceleration value as well as direction. Can you comment at least on one of the two magnitude or direction? See I said when you are sitting on a rotating frame of reference, I would see the particle to move on along the slot, fine. So, what you will have to recognize here is ARL, ARL direction is along the slot and hence ARL equal to ARL i it is a very, very important statement. You should not confuse with the absolute acceleration of point A, then you will not be able to write it. You have a long expression which contains several terms. You are only looking at a term what a rotating observer will observe. And you go back to your previous problem where we had done the quick return mechanism of uh, shaper. There again you had a slot which is straight. Visualizing velocity along the direction of the slot is okay, but saying acceleration will also be in the direction requires some imagination. Okay. So, you have to appreciate this. ARL equal to ARL i. Once you say this, your mathematics can help you to solve it because I would have grouping i terms and j terms and I would be able to calculate the value of quantities that are associated with i and j. So, a person sitting on the rotating frame of reference would observe the acceleration dictated by the slot. Because the slot is straight, it turns out to be a simple expression along the slot. 
okay if the slot is curved then i have to go to n and t coordinates and find out what is the acceleration it will have uh, both the components normal and tangential component okay so i have unit vector as uh, a o equal to minus cos 30 i minus sin 30 j and I have uh, the magnitude is uh, o a omega squared o a and if I write it in vectorial form it turns out to be like this. So, what I have done here is I have my x y axis six frame is like this, but my rotating frame is inclined and I found it is convenient to write all quantities with, with respect to the rotating frame of reference. So, you have to understand this has multiple terms also the frame of reference are different for different terms. So, you have to put the vectorial summation properly. If the rotating frame of reference and fixed frame of reference are not coincident or parallel or uh, any when any one of these conditions are violated ok. So, you have to handle this. So, it adds up to little more of mathematics. So, substituting these terms in the equation it is a child's play to solve it. I keep writing this because you know you have to keep looking at this and you should rem remember it. See, by learning a subject like this, certain things you have to remember, there is no choice and if you keep writing it several times, you are in a position to remember that and it is fairly easy to solve this and I get this ARL as minus 14614.2 i millimeter per second square. We have used a very important understanding that the ARL would be along the slot. It is dictated by the slot, I will put it that way because if the slot is curved, then it can have a normal component of acceleration as well as a tangential component of acceleration. Now, let us go and uh, investigate the mechanism much more closely ok. This is supposed to help your visualization. You know I have done all these uh, simulations based on uh, PowerPoint. So, I have been able to group them together, segregate them so that you get a better depth of understanding of what is happening fine. Because you know how I gets uh, taken away by the way that you thinks in a sequence ok, that is what I want you to look at it. So, just keep your observational skills uh, as high as possible. So, I have a rotating frame of reference attached to this, I am now going to look at as two rigid bodies ok. I have a rotating frame attached to the slotted member C D and I have a frame like this, this is just moving. In my original animation, I also had a dot here, ok, because you know the dot here is uh, behind this member, it was not clear and let me just see how I had animated this dot, ok. This a dot was animated like this. Do you see any motion of this dot? How does it move? It is going and stopping there, fine. Now, let us look at the same animation from a different perspective. I am going to look at the rotation of a crank. I put the fixed frame. You know this is a luxury you enjoy because of multimedia type of development of the course. Otherwise, it is impossible to show any one of these uh, variations. And now, I am having this rotating frame moving like this and I am just having the crank rotating, I am not rotating any other member. You can see it again, you know you find that uh, 
there is no connectivity between that uh, frame of reference and the crank, fine. Just the particle is rotating, let us also look at just the particle is rotating. This is all same animations where I play with the groupings, okay. I just have the, I will have the rotating frame and also the particle. At least do you recognize that this particle is rotating as a circular motion? It is nothing but the particle at the end of the crank. You do not see all of that, okay. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to rotate this light green slot and this particle together. I am not going to rotate any other stuff. Let us see what is at that view. view. Well, this is what we have been saying, if you are rotating with the frame of reference, what would you observe? See, you do not have an opportunity, there is a rotating frame, you cannot go and sit and watch. We have to only imagine, visualize. How best I can take you to that kind of imagination is the question. So now I am going to rotate the green member and just the particle, I am not going to rotate the crank, okay. And just look at the magical stuff. I see very clearly the particle is simply moving on the slot. When I individually look at the particle, it has a very arbitrary motion. You saw it yourself. And what we have been saying is, when I say that I am sitting on the ro rotating frame of reference and observe, I would observe the particle to move along the slot. So, visualize it again. So, this is what we are trying to explain you. Is the idea clear? Again, the particle has a subtler motion, but when you wish see these two animations together, you get a dramatic picture, okay. Let me also ask you one more thing, since you are all wedded to your particle dynamics, much more than rigid body dynamics, it does not get into you, you resist, you solve any problem from particle dynamics. This is a very good problem in particle dynamics. I have simple polar coordinate system. I am looking at r dot and theta dot, that is what the problem is. Or you can also have a problem, I have a slot like this and then I have an ant crawling from this end to that end, you have a problem like that, is not it? They are not mechanics problems, okay. If I have to make a device, how do I have that particle to move on the slot? It has to be attached to a crank and then rotate it. From a mechanical engineering perspective, I need to have a crank and rot rotate it. Here I am able to disassemble all of them and then visualize it from different perspectives. So this is very, very interesting. This is what we have always been saying when I say a coincident point, when I am sitting on the member and then observe it, I will observe the particle to move on the slot which is very clearly brought out. Now I will. Uh, let me see whether the next one is that or the, yeah. Now I go back to my original animation where I have this attached to this. I have all of them rotating. I have the particle is also rotating so that this particle looks brighter, okay. So to make this animation, it has so many layers. So it is very complicated to do, okay. My student had done this complicated one, gave it to me. I was able to disassemble it and then bring it before you a very important and subtle concept. I hope that you have got the hang of what I am trying to explain, okay. And uh, this is to re-emphasize, we are looking at this. We will solve this problem using polar coordinates. Because you have a natural urgency to go and solve it by a polar coordinates. And then you are coming and asking, why not you give mass? I will give you 0 only. But you need to understand how to tackle this problem from a rotating frame of reference because you are learning a new methodology, okay. 
So, using polar coordinates, I have this like this, and I am also going to put it on this the animation and then show how they are uh, beautifully illustrated. So, what I will do is I will put this member here, I will rotate only the green member and this and uh, I have this beautifully rotated like this ok and I can have a radial vector like this and the E theta like this and this is oriented at angle 30. So, from your polar coordinate system, I can write this V a as r dot E r plus r theta dot E theta because you have used polar coordinate system for circular motion where you had r as constant, you have not solved problems where r is varying. You can also solve problems where r is varying, r dot I have, r double dot, all these possibilities exist and whatever the problem that you have can also be visualized from the perspective of a particle analysis, which misses out a need for a crank. Whereas, a mechanical engineer needs to have a crank to have that particle moving. Okay. So, like I said in statics, you have to visualize how the loads are applied. In dynamics, visualize how the motion is affected. So, so comparing the tangential and normal components of the link C B, see I should also get identical answers. Method does not influence my final result, fine. So, I have V A cos 30 equal to R theta dot and I can also find out what is uh, the value of R and I can also find out what is theta dot, then I have minus V A sin 30 equal to R dot. So, R dot is 1125 millimeter per second, which is your uh, V rel in our earlier symbolism. So, I can also solve this problem using polar coordinates, because you had a very nice uh, illustration that the particle is coming down, it is not just coming down, it is also rotating. So, you have r dot as well as theta dot existing. So, you have done this now, I can also go ahead and write the expression for the accelerations So, acceleration of point A I can write it like this, I have a radial component and also a tangential component, normal and tangential component. So, I can write this as uh, in terms of E r and E theta. So, velocity of A is completely known, which is expressed in terms of E r and E theta. So, for the slotted link C b, I have r double dot minus r theta dot square E r plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot e theta. So, here again you see I have very similar to your Coriolis component. See the grudge was a person sitting in the rotating frame does not observe, but mathematically that term was always existing no problem. If you have your mathematics right, the expressions are flawless. So, I have A C B as uh, minus 14614 E R minus 16875 E theta. So, I have uh, acceleration of A with respect to C B as minus 14614 E R millimeter per second square. So, this is again along the slot, which again reinforces the discussion that when I sit on the rotating frame of reference, the slot dictates the 
direction of velocity as well as the acceleration direction. Slot, if it is straight, it turns out to be along the slot. If it is curved, it is dictated by the normal and tangential components. Okay. We will also have a peep into the other way of uh, solving the problem. You know, this is like uh, touching the nose the other way. I can touch the nose like easily like this. I can also touch the nose, put it like this and then touch it. Do an acrobat and say you are doing a great yoga, okay. Add some uh, spice to it, everybody will start doing it. Because this is physically not uh, easy to visualize. Because some students have solved it like this, when we correct the paper, we will also have to solve it like this and see how much we can uh, give marks. You understand? Because you do not simply cut your answers straight away as bad. So, whenever I have a slotted member where the member is moving, take the axis on the slotted member is fine. If there is a choice between putting it along with the fixed frame of reference or putting at the point, put it with the fixed frame of reference. Okay, do not put it on the point because now I have to reverse the problem completely. I have to view the point, fix the point like this. Let me do some initial calculations okay, and then you just see what is the way circus I have to do to get the similar numbers. Okay, because it is not physically visualizable. Okay, a physical visualization is when there is a slot, point is moving in a slot, view the point, do not sit on the point. You, you, you get the difference? This is what I am trying to say. You may ultimately get the numbers because you know many times you do not have time to visualize. You know this is what it is and then you simply put some direction and then put some mathematics and then if the answer is ask you to prove, you will always know how to prove. Okay. So, it is like working backwards. So, it is really physically not uh, comfortable to do. So, from previous solution, I have all this. I okay. will just write the expression. So, I have A A P as minus 1125 and then I have to have uh, V L as uh, P with respect to A, all the circus I have to do. And then when I want to write the acceleration expression, because we have solved the problem, acceleration expression I have to write from A C to A. Okay. So, not the important change in the LHS. So, you have to do this, then you will be able to get ARL correctly. Fine. But you will get ARL correctly, but if you have to interpret the Coriolis acceleration, you, get, you will again have to do a circus. So, the advice is please do not sit on the point which is moving on the slot. Sitting on the point means what? You are attaching the coordinate of the rotating frame of reference. The observer sits on the coordinate origin and then looks at what happens. So, do not sit on the point. Okay. That is also a learning. When I have a slotted member, you take the rotating frame of reference on the slotted member, on the slotted member at an appropriate point so that I can view the point moving along the slot. Do not sit on the point, that would be the recommendation that I would say. These are all thumb rules. See these thumb rules you must verify for a given application whether the, this is applicable. So, in this class uh, we have looked at a very simple problem and we have dissected the animations so that you are able to appreciate what we actually mean when I am having a rotating frame of reference. What is the advantage? I must have an advantage by selecting a rotating frame of reference and we have learnt a thumb rule if I have a slotted member, attach a rotating frame of reference to a slotted member and you have also learnt do not attach the coordinate of rotating frame of reference to the point of interest you will not get any benefit out of it. So, what not to do is also you should learn. Thank you.